<clears throat> wow. Okay, we're uh, we are live. Just uh, getting set up. Thanks, folks, uh, for for joining. Okay, uh, let's see if I can uh, show that. James Carter. Hey, James. <laughs> Good to have you on. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining. Hope your uh, your hand is healing up fine. So. I saw the, uh, the post of your uh, new uh, table saw coming, so that's cool. That's very exciting. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so here we are in my shop. Um, I've got uh, an image behind me. We can pull that down, but I think that's, that's still going to be a green screen. But uh, uh, I've got, I was just finished a demo this morning, so I um, had about an hour and a half break between. So we're, uh, we're kind of moving along, right along. I don't have... Um, <clears throat> everything set up as I was I was thinking I might, but uh, let's see. Uh, we are going to talk general lathe tooling today, so I think that's in the background, obviously. So my intent was to really kind of um, show um, uh, just a little bit of the lathe, and, and for this to kind of be a series, I guess, over the next little while. I'm not sure how long, and I'm Honestly, not sure how often. I'm hoping once a week, but, uh, um, you know, uh, we'll see how, um, which day of the week I, I kind of pin this on. But I'm going to try and keep a, keep a cadence of once a week for a quick live stream. And we'll progress through, you know, from general lathe tooling, Q&A, and stuff like that thing I was going to show, uh, along with um, uh, moving into specific areas of tooling and specific, specific areas of turning and stuff. So... Um, I wasn't really going to show a lot of turning today, but I'll talk a little bit, uh, um, talk a little bit about, um, uh, about turning. Obviously that's what the whole channel is about. That's what I'm about. So, uh, but we'll, we'll go through uh, what we can today. So, um, <clears throat> oh, James, yeah, I overdid it a little yesterday. Okay. Well, take it easy. Sit back, relax, you know, get yourself a beverage and, uh, we'll see what, uh, see what we can talk about today. So I'll be, uh. Happy to take your uh, questions as they come in, so feel free to uh, chat uh, uh, there. So James is uh, watching uh, over YouTube, and uh, I'm also streaming to my Facebook page at the same time. So um, let me just uh, check something here for a second, see if I can. Um, I just want to view it on Facebook to see... Uh, make sure everything's there. I'm sure it is, but uh, just wanted to verify. Um, and uh, play. Okay, yep, there it is. Yep, okay, so that's good. So I'll close that down. I want to watch that as I'm streaming. Um, and on face or YouTube. So, and there it is. There it is on YouTube. So good. Okay, so uh, all that out of the way. Uh, let's take a look, uh, let me give you a look of what, uh, um, let me pull my head out of the way, and let me take this banner down, bear with me as I work this tool, so this is a, uh, this is an ugly camera, it's a little sports camera up here in the, in the corner, um, just beside me, um, so you see the overlay, it's got the 1080p signal and all that stuff on it, but, uh, um, it's what I have. I've got another camera coming on the way, um, so uh, we'll be uh, we'll be replacing that one soon. So um, you're looking at my lathe. Uh, this is a Powermatic 3520. So we'll go over the little bits and pieces uh, here in a second, and just so everybody's uh, familiar. I know a lot of people are, but uh, I want to try and help uh, everybody come along uh, along the way. So. Um, James says, I really wanted to see what other people ask about. Oh, you can't see the camera, James? Um, let me, let me just see for a second. Bear with me as I go do this again. Oh, no, uh, YouTube, the James, uh, so yeah, comments are showing up. Let me mute that. Let me mute that for a second. Um, so it's showing up, uh, comments are showing up on YouTube. Let me make sure comments are showing up on Facebook. It should be. 
course, I, do I have any comments on Facebook yet? That's a question. Peter Blair joined. Okay. Uh, test. Comment. Okay. Let's just see. Yes. Okay. So they're showing up from both places. So that's good. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Just want to make sure comments are getting uh, seen. If you can't see them, uh, they should be uh, in YouTube. I think you need to go on the screen, and there should be a little sort of, uh, and you can't see me what I'm doing. There should be a sort of a little bubble, uh, with a little thing on it, you know, like a cartoon bubble up in the top corner, actually that corner of the screen, and it probably has an X through it or a cross through it. If you haven't click that, you should be able to see comments. So, on Facebook, I think they're just there automatically. So YouTube, I think you have to unhide them so anyway back to uh oh well isn't that uh, so apropos get a call right in the middle of this um we have uh, in front of you my paramatic 3520 this is uh like i said an ugly tailstock camera view or uh, view of the overall thing uh this little phone here is showing a close-up and i've got a, another camera up here and one in front of me so four cameras here today. So general general lathe tooling, minus the stuff up here, this is the stuff that's running uh, this whole show. Um, we've got uh, a Powermatic 3520D. And uh, Doreen, oh, well look at that. Thank you, Doreen. London, uh, Ontario, Canada. So I'm originally from Canada, originally from Calgary. I moved down here 23 years ago now. So thanks for joining. And Johnny Tolley from Austin. Good to have you here, Johnny. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. And uh, hey, Billy Burt, down in San Antonio. Way. So thanks for chiming in. Appreciate it. Um, the 3520B is uh, is a fairly stout machine. I got this thing in 2007, but every lathe essentially has the same components, um, you, which you'll see uh, uh, in the uh, in the screen. Let me take that. that that's uh, that's kind of confusing. So what you'll see is the, the whole lathe here, the bed, from this end to this end, the big cast iron legs, and I've got mine up on blocks uh, to give it an extra three and a half, four inches of height because I'm a fairly tall guy. Um, the headstock here uh, with a motor over on this side uh, is the, uh, the workings of it. You've got a hand wheel on the outside. Uh, through the hand wheel and into this threaded part, which is called the spindle, uh, is the spindle. Uh, the threads on the spindle uh, allow you to attach things. This hole here is tapered, allows you to attach things with a taper. So this whole box is the headstock. So um, that's the uh, where the motor uh, in here is pulleys. You can change pulleys, uh, the on-off switch, and uh, power button. So most lathes, all, all lathes are going to have a headstock of some sort with a power drive of some sort, whether it's um, you know belt and pulleys or direct drive or or whatever it may be so um, not all will have a variable speed here this little knob down here uh, changes the speed um, and then uh, from the headstock uh, between the headstock and uh, this piece which is called the tail stock is where you hold your wood let me move that camera out of the way so this these two things here are what's going to hold your, your wood. So this tail stock slides along the lathe beds and uh, you hold wood between there. And that's that's essentially it. There's a lot of different components going on between those two, but uh, we'll start there. This thing in the middle is a banjo and in there you stick a tool rest. Got multiple variations of tool rest to stick in there, but that would go in like that. And then your tool rests on there as you turn wood. Now the biggest difference um, difference between this and a metal lathe is that uh, metal lathes uh, the machine holds the bit to turn wood. Uh, in wood lathes we hold the bit to turn um, or metal lathes hold the bit to turn metal um, and we hold the bit to turn wood. So um, I have my, my brother's machinist and he uh, he came down and, and uh, turned on a lathe and you know, having to hold that tool was foreign to him, so. Um, but otherwise, the components are pretty much the same. Um, 
Let me just uh, check. Let's see. Uh, oh, that was hello. Oh, not hell. Okay. <laughs> uh, fairly tall. You tower over me. Yeah, okay. I do a little bit, Billy. You're, you're a short guy. So, um, but I, I love, and I hope to see you in August in SWAT. Hope to see uh, you too, Johnny, and hopefully that works out. I don't know what they've made a decision or not. So um, I uh, will find out. Uh, SWAT, uh, for those that don't know, is a big show here down in Texas and Waco happens at the end of August and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, uh, let's talk about, uh, let's see what else is on the lathe I've missed. So headstock, tailstock, bed, uh, the ways of the bed, banjo, tool rest, um, let's put that up. We'll talk a little bit about um, other uh, things that typically typically come with your lathe. One would be a, and I'm going to change this uh, overhead. Would be a a drive center. So if I zoom in here a little bit, and let me uh, let me put this down for a second, just gives you a bit of contrast. So uh, this is tapered, that's a, a Morris taper number two, there's different sizes, uh, Morris taper one, two, three, four, and I think it goes up to seven. Um, but this lathe has tapers in here and that holds stuff so it, it's pretty solid, you can't see that. Um, and uh, so that slides in and kind of gets stuck in there with the matching taper on the inside. And same thing on the other side it's tapered as well so that would fit in there as well but you don't want to put this in this side right that's not where that goes so that brings us to the next piece that usually comes with a, a lathe which is a, a center for this side now what's the difference between these two um, we can see and uh, let's get uh, this light over a little bit We can see that these two guys have uh, a piece of wood between them. But what's the difference? So to me, uh, you know, it's one of those um, conversations in uh, in terminology, right? Who calls what what? Um, so this is a drive center because it's in the drive, the powered side of the lathe. Uh, it's also called a dead center, um, and they're not necessarily a dead center needs to go in a drive center, but or in a drive side, but it typically does. I think if somebody knows from a machinist point of view whether that's called a dead center and it only goes in this side, let me know in the comments. That'd be great. And uh, the other side, and this side, since this side gets driven by the lathe, uh, by the motor, and I'll just uh, turn that on. So it's spinning. This side does not, so this needs ball bearings inside this guy to revolve. Otherwise, uh, we would have um, wood spinning, uh, and this not spinning is not a good idea. There's a lot of friction and heat building up. So, so this is called a uh, shit. Sorry, excuse me. Jeez, uh, words are, are escaping me now. Um, live center. So a live center, I call it a live center because it's alive, it can move. So it's also called uh, tailstock uh, drive center or tailstock center, or what's the other words for these things um, that you guys have heard? So I got a comment here from Billy. Let's show that. It says many older lays actually were set up to do double duty, metal and wood turning. Absolutely, yeah. In fact, uh, um, I've turned metal on this lathe. Um, I uh, am making a uh, bar, a uh, metal bar for a tool holder. I actually put this in a, a chuck and threw my headstock and actually turned this down with, uh, with some tooling. Um, this is mild steel, so can turn with high speed or carbide. So, um, and I do some other, you know, metal working type things on this lathe as well. So. Absolutely right, Billy. Okay, so uh, live center, dead center, um, and 
you know, I use the word dead center because there's many other things that can go in here that, you know, perhaps aren't dead um, in terms of this. And one of them would be and Jacob's chuck. So it's still a dead center, I guess, because it's not, it doesn't have any bearings and it's not moving. You don't want it to move because this thing moves. But, you know, this is more of a chuck than a dead center, but it still can drive wood. So I, I tend to use the word dead center for that thing. That's just me. Uh, like I said, drive center would work um, as well. Uh, so this and i leave these here. Those will come with your, your lathe. The last thing that's going to come with the lathe, and hopefully I got access to it, um, is... Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. It's good to know where things are in your shop, so... It is a faceplate. So this, uh, this has threads on it that match the spindle. And the size of threads that will be on a spindle uh, will change depending on the, the lathe, so... This particular lathe has uh, one and a quarter by eight. And so one and a quarter by eight, what does that mean? It means that this diameter is one and a quarter inches and that the threads here are eight, eight threads per inch. So you see one X uh, eight TPI is how you might see it. So let me see if I can, while well, I'm just talking about that, let's see if I can put that up there just quickly. Um, so if I did one by eight TPI, let's just show that for a second. Why didn't that show? There we go. So that, uh, whoops, that tip TPI. Uh, you? There we go. One by eight TPI. So TPI is threads per inch. So if you see threads per inch, talking about in an inch length, how many threads will I get? So that's eight in that in that inch of of, of thread there. So one and a quarter. Uh, well, I got one there, but one uh, one uh, one and a quarter by eight is what I have. One by eight is used on most mini lathes. So you might see this. one and a quarter inch by eight TPI. So that's, uh, that's what I have here. Uh, one and a quarter by eight TPI. Uh, so when you're going to buy a lathe, uh, things to think about are accessories you're gonna put on the lathe, what uh, taper you have on both sides, what threads per inch you have. So, and typically you'd get a revolving center, drive center, and a face plate uh, that comes with your lathe. Um, there are other things that you'll get. You'll get a knockout bar. This is used for knocking out. Um, dead centers and then in my lathe I got a wrench to take off things like this faceplate so that'll help get that off if it gets stuck on there see it down there pull it off so uh, when you go to get a lathe or you're thinking about buying a lathe or looking at a, a used lathe um, check to make sure you got the accessories you're looking for knock out bar let's see if I can widen this out a little bit so this is used to knock out dead centers out of there because this is kind of gets stuck in there and uh, you'll need to put this through the spindle and knock it out you can see it po poking out there okay so that's generally what comes with your lathe those items let me let me actually well I have those in hand talk about this a little bit let me just check the uh, comments so let's see Johnny says old lay the you at dead center in the live in the tailstock with wax uh, and you now use live centers with wax friction okay okay so there's a good good thing and and uh, perhaps a uh, this kind of live center uh, which is more of a cup center might and you could certainly do this um, in there and your wood would just friction fit on there and would spin and Johnny's saying they'd wax that up or um, Or some other kind of tailstock um, so that it, it splits 
but with the, uh, I guess the uh, increasing uh, use and you know technology, whatever you want to call it, um, ball bearings went in. So actually, I'll keep get that one out over here. So let's see. Thanks, uh, Johnny. Appreciate that. That's good to know. Yeah, it's one and a quarter, sir. Thanks, Billy. I uh, I fixed it. Um, was it most MIDI lathes in the U.S. use one bay? Yep, absolutely. I uh, I uh, good catch. I did catch that as I went through my typos. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look at this a little bit closer, because if you're looking at a used lay, this is something you wanna wanna check out. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And one of the things we want to check is how well do these two things line up? And I honestly haven't done this on my lathe for quite a while. So we put them together. I'll make sure that's seated and that's seated. And we see how close, let's see how close I can get. Okay, so you can see mine is ever so slightly off. And if I lock that down, that's going to lock down. So I've got my two points aren't meeting exactly together. Pretty darn close. Let's see if I spin that. Does that change? That's not going to change that. So what if I were to, because I did move my headstock just the other day. I'm just going to nudge my headstock a little bit. See if it will lock down any different. Nope. <laughs> and so I am just about oh got a that looks like one sixty-fourth at the most maybe out. So uh, with that you could do some adjustments. Probably the easiest one is to uh you can take a look at the bottom of the tailstock and see if you can't move something ever so slightly. But for me, um, I haven't done this since I bought the lathe, checked it. Uh, this hasn't bothered me for the last 13 years, so I'm not too worried about it at this point. So, uh, But that's one thing to check. Uh, if you're buying a lathe and uh, you get in and you want to look at it and you end up seeing where this may be you know, out a lot more like that, that may be a problem, um, so you may want to see if something is damaged, either this piece uh, is damaged, um, or if uh, if something else is out of alignment. And it could be could be fixable, um, but it's something to check when you're buying a lathe. So let me check where I'm at. And uh, we're already halfway through. So what I wanted to also talk about is a little bit space and consideration. So environmental consideration or your environment, what you're in. Let me uh, back this out a little bit. That's as far as I can go out there. Let me switch this to the wide. So I've, this is a fairly big lathe. It's probably uh, 48, 50 inches from end to end. Maybe a little longer with the motor on here. Um, so you need room, um, then you're also going to need room for, you know, accessories and stuff. So stuff hanging, tooling and stuff like that. Um, I've got dust collector hose coming in, um, you know, down and, and uh, some going up and around to the back. So dust collector would be helpful. Um, you don't need all the camera lights I've got and stuff. Uh, but you need some space. Um, I finally put air conditioning into this room. Um, a couple of years ago, so that has made turning in here um, much more enjoyable. Um, so that's something to think about. Uh, dust is another one, so you need to worry about dust and, and uh, what you're going to do with it, how you're going to get rid of it. And uh, so um, <coughs> think about what you're going to need in terms of setting up a lathe, having it where you want to turn, and uh, what you're going to do with the dust and what you're going to do with all the, the equipment you have. And the other thing you're going to have, and I don't know if you can 
see it back there but you know behind this post over there way back there i've got a rack full of wood and turnings and blanks and stuff like that i've got another bench over there we've got grinders grinders we're going to need so let me uh let me see if i can point to this one so over there i've got a big grinder uh, on that uh, bench over there i've got another uh, sharpening station there and I've got a second grinder behind me that uh, it's not really visible. But uh, grinders are going to be necessary for sharpening tools. And uh, that kind of thing. So I can check what has Billy got to say. So Billy, Powermatic tells you to raise the rear, right rear adjuster on the, on the leg a little. That should take a small amount of warp out of the bedways. Just went through it myself. Oh, okay. So, yeah, maybe my legs are twisting the bed. That's a good possibility. Thanks, Billy. Um, that's something to think about. When I set this up, moved it over here, and I, I shimmed the wheels uh, a little bit just to get everything so it, it, it doesn't move. That's the uh, tailstock loose. But if I shake it, it it's not moving anywhere. So, uh, But it doesn't necessarily mean that I've made the bed level. Um, and to be honest, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't really matter that it's absolutely level, but, uh, what matters is that whatever I'm using with it is parallel to the bedway. So if I'm got a hollowing rig and, you know, it's outboard way out there and it's, you know, um, using a outboard steady or something like that, I just want to make sure that that's parallel to the bed. Um, uh, if you got everything leveled on your, your, um, your floor and your beds are level, then you can set everything level. So um, it's a consideration uh, in a shop floor in a garage. I'm in a garage, so uh, floors out here aren't necessarily level. Um, so to me, it wasn't uh, wasn't an issue, uh, but that may be causing um, my two points to not quite align. So could be that something to check. Um, thanks, Billy. Good uh, good thing. And, and you uh, you just um, did that on your so the 2014, I think you got the new one, or did you have to do that on the old one when you moved it? Let me know. Oh, James uh, over on YouTube watching. Uh, that just happened on my Laguna when I moved it. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's uh, there's some empirical evidence that uh, perhaps we've got uh, um, a way to kind of fix this. So that's something I'll look into. Um, um, so definitely, uh, it's uh, it's a great a great exchange of information here. So appreciate that, guys. Thanks, James. Uh, you wouldn't think a heavy, heavy cast iron bed would twist, but apparently it does. Yeah, everything has a uh, a movement to it. Yeah, on the 2014. So that's why I thought. Thanks. Um, so yeah. So if you're looking to set up your lathe, um, and as James and Billy have said, if you've got a bedway. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not leveled out just right. The bed or the legs aren't leveled out just right. The bed could twist a little bit and that might throw this, uh, centering off a little bit. So something to, uh, consider something, uh, I hadn't, cause I really hadn't done this test for quite a while. Um, let's see. Uh, what other space and environment considerations, uh, Lighting. Lighting is a good one. So I've got plenty of lights around me for uh, doing this uh, filming thing. But uh, lighting, I mean, especially as you get older, as you guys might attest, is uh, is important. So uh, so good lighting. Um, and uh, I don't know if you saw down here, I've got some of this sort of diamond pattern uh, spongy foam stuff. Um, so I don't like stepping on concrete. The other thing I got is uh, I got these big uh, sort of gum boots on. They're kind of cushy. So... Uh, I can stand for quite a while with these uh, with these things. Um, task lighting, Billy, exactly. So this little light, I've got a task light I can move around and stuff like that. I've also got um, the uh, this is a this is a good time to plug this this little Cindy Droz delight. Boom! That's a little magnetic uh, little magnets on the back of a little section of LEDs. You can stick that anywhere you need it. Um, stick it on your tool rest if it's in here. 
uh, move that around. It's got a little uh, on off switch. And uh, so that's a handy task light as well. So good segue there, Billy, thanks. <laughs> um, so let's see, what is, uh, Johnny asks, uh, explain how the live center is removed from the tailstock. Oh, that's a good question, yeah, good. So this is a, uh, uh, this is a good question because we did talk about the knockout bar that removed the, the dead center out of here. Uh, but when you get this uh, jammed in there, uh, and it's going to get jammed in there not by slamming it in like that, but by when you crank this up and squeeze a piece of wood together, um, it'll get locked in there, and it's going to be hard to pull it out. On most lathes, not all, but most lathes, you can, oops, went the wrong way. You can crank this handle. Let me uh, move this over a little bit. And I'll widen, widen this out a little bit. So I'm cranking the handle backwards, and this quill, this is called the uh, tailstock quill, by the way. It slides in and out, and there's threading in here, and as you wind this, it sucks the, uh, um, the thing. And this is a good thing to, uh, to pull out and clean every once in a while. I'll maybe show that in another live, uh, live stream at some point. So as you get down to where it's going to, um, you know, get where it's going to get close to coming out, you'll feel it, uh, the hand wheel stop and it's going to stop right there and it just stopped on me it stops dead you kind of go oh, okay well how do i get this thing out well just hit it a bit more and that knocks it out so what's happening is back there the lead screw is uh is hitting the end of this thing so the lead screw is sitting about here now and so when that lead screw yeah uh lead screw comes up and hits that end um that's what's forcing it out so uh, on some lathes, they don't have that um, um, mechanism uh, for some reason, I'm not quite sure. So you can take your knockout bar, and to be honest, I haven't done this in a long time, but that'll fit in there as well. And let me uh, widen that out. Ooh, and let's just zip along this way. So here is my knockout bar. And you can just, it's got a little slack in it, so it kind of hammers. And it pops it out. You can see it pop out there, so. That's the other way to do it. So it's a convenience thing, having that, uh, uh, you know, be able to crank back and, and uh, pull it out that way. Um, maybe a design thing from an engineering point of view when they designed this thing. So good question, Johnny. Thanks very much. Um, so, ventilation is important. Yes, it is. So, that's what I mentioned earlier. I, I installed a uh, mini, sp mini split air conditioner. Uh, it keeps me nice and cool. It's sitting around 69 in here right now, which is nice. Probably 70 ish with the, uh, the warming up of the day. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's see. Let's look at uh, perhaps some. Um, uh, um, some uh, what a space environmental, what did I have after that? Um, let me get back on track here. The lathe, okay, lathe accessories. Lathe accessories. Let's talk about lathe accessories a little bit, I guess. Um, so, we talked about kind of the standard things, the drive center, the live center, the, uh, the, oh, the, I guess I didn't mention that the, you'll get a standard tool arrest. Um, you know, with, with the, the live center, the drive center, um, you'll get a tool rest that comes standard with your lathe as well, typically, if you buy one new. Um, so you get the dead center, live center, faceplate, tool rest um, as sort of the minimal set of accessories that come with your lathe. Other things you can get are uh, more and different types of drive centers. So here is, uh, here is one I have. It is a... Uh, boy. Let's zoom in there a little bit. It is a um, a cut point center. I think this one is the robust. I think a, a, a one way makes one. So that goes in there. It's a different way of driving. I like this a lot for spindles. So and there you go, locked in already. So you can get different drive centers. Uh, where is uh, there? We go. It's hiding on me. You can get this kind of drive center. Maybe people recognize that. 
So if you uh, if you know me a little bit, I uh, I sell these things. These are uh, um, what I call the Elio DR drives. And these are the Elio is the name of the gentleman that you know kind of came up with the idea uh, from the original owners of of selling these things. So that's how I got into the business, was kind of buying out those two guys from, from Edmonton. Uh, bought up their stock and now uh, created more uh, tooling and stuff. So, But this device is like a drive center. So if you look at, uh, I keep putting that down in the wrong place. You look at this one, and it's got four spurs on it and a center point. See that center point there? Let me zoom in a bit more. Yeah, so... Um, those four spurs bite into the wood, and that would kind of look like this. See those four marks there? And that's what makes the wood spin, uh, is biting in like that. This guy uses a point and two adjustable pointy screws to be able to drive in uh, um, any kind of wood. I don't have anything sitting around here. Excuse my reach for a second. So if you had a... Uh, a block of wood that was, you know, cattywampus, or you cut it crooked on the on the chainsaw. You know, you can mount it kind of sideways like that um, and drive it that way. So, different kind of uh, way of doing things. Uh, you can adjust these pins uh, about an inch uh, either way. The center pin is adjustable too. So, that's another kind of drive center. There's two sizes of this, a three and a half inch and a two and a half inch. And we can go more into those kind of things. Uh, at a later show, later live stream. Um, you can get different, uh, so this, I guess I should mention that this guy, oops, he's not there, comes with a couple of parts to it. So if you want to change or make an adapter for this, by the way, this thread is three quarter by 10 threads per inch, so 3 quarter by 10 TPI, um, and uh, you, this tailstock drive center comes with a removable cone center, not all of them have this to be able to re be removed, but uh, most do, most bigger lathes, and so you can uh, change that out, and you can get accessories now um, to add on to here, so, um, and some things I think Johnny is pretty familiar with is, uh, is this kind of thing. Um, so this is a an adapter to change this to this size of thread. So that may become handy if you want to change uh, something from here to over here, like that faceplate. And why would you want to do that? Well, if you turn something on here, like a bowl or something, and it's stuck here, you want to kind of get a center point on this side. You can mount it that way and make sure it's all mounted up. So. So those kind of accessories exist. Um, there's other things you can put on here. You can make your own accessories. I made a little cone drive center. It's just a slip fit over there. It doesn't need to be on there at all. So uh, that's just for driving stuff. So you make your own. Uh, that's about it in there. Um, oh, um, yeah. these are handy little accessory. So if you have uh, these are called these are from a company called Rubber Chucky. So those are nice for a soft touch on the end here. If you're trying to not to mar whatever turning you're doing. So other accessories you can buy for those things. Um, for this side, you can get chucks. You can get all kinds of different chucks for your lathe. Chuck is a, uh, so these are called four jaw chucks. Typically, machine shops have three jaws, uh, metal machine shops, and uh, this is, has four, so, and it's called a four jaw scroll chuck. It's called a scroll chuck because of, in here, you got this scrolling gear that uh, allows the, uh, That's the right thing. Between that gear and, and the gears in here um, are kind of 
we'll call it, we'll give it the scroll name. It scrolls around. So this key engages and you're able to open the jaws of the chuck and stick your wood in there. So that's the basic operation of a chuck. These jaws come in different sizes, different ranges. So, but uh, yeah, so um, we can talk and do a whole show just on chucks alone, but they come in all different kinds of sizes. Nice big one with big jaws and uh, even, uh, even bigger still. I can't take that one down. So, and different makes. This is a Vicmark chuck, so it uses a hex key instead of a, a scroll key. So, um, so there's a bunch of accessories you can certainly use. So, let me uh, let me see what else we got going. Um, just gotta go check my. Okay, yeah, uh, this is the big one. So. Um, we can jump back to lathe accessories when we, uh, um, if somebody brings something up, but uh, I just want to quickly touch on hand tools. So this is probably the biggest um, discussion point that, you know, a lot of wood turners talk about, different kind of tools they use and, uh, and stuff. So let's widen this out a little bit. So there's all kinds of hand tools, um, three, three sort of categories, if you will. I don't know if I got them all here. Like that. Bring some in, so I'm gonna widen out a little bit. So we have gouges, uh, and basically they're all kind of called chisels, if you will. Um, and so we've got, uh, I think, uh, gouges, um, scrapers, and uh, um, so I think most everything kind of fits into that category, uh, uh, one of those categories. So a parting tool would be a, um, a paper or um, skew is something that has a bevel on both sides, and uh, it typically um, there's now a lot of scraping tools that do the same sort of thing so this could be called a negative rake scraper it really depends on how you use it if you're rubbing the bevel or just floating the bevel across then you're skewing with it um, or uh, the point um, there's another skew for comparison so a couple of different styles thicknesses gouges we've got uh, bowl type gouges I don't have a spindle gouge handy do I I do over here for some reason. I'll show that in a second. We've got well, there's three different style of gouges, and uh, let me get this little thing again. This might be handy. We've got bowl gouges, spindle gouge, uh, roughing gouge, and uh, spindle gouge. So. These two guys are, are for spindle use, typically. I can use this on a bowl, though, but can't use this on a bowl. Um, the reason why is it's, it's too weak here. So, spindle roughing gouge, only for spindles. Uh, bowl gouges, much thicker here, uh, can be used on bowls or spindles. And uh, the difference between those two is, and we can, we can talk about this later in another in-depth discussion. The depth of the flute, the profile, and the shape of the gouge uh, really kind of dictates whether it's a spindle gouge uh, or a bowl gouge. So, so, and then, uh, and then you got parting tools and uh, um, kind of hybrid tools. So here's a good parting tool. It's got a uh, thin profile, pointy on both sides. And uh, it really could be used like a skew. In fact, I do skew uh, cut with this tool as well. Um, this is a beading parting tool, so it's kind of a combination skew and parting tool. And uh, so it depends on how you use the tool is really kind of where you classify it in terms of skew or parting tool. 
and then uh, we can get into a whole long discussion on different kinds of tools. We can get into a whole long discussion just on one tool um, and stuff, but uh, we'll leave that for uh, another date. Perhaps there's some um, some comments or some uh, suggestions from from you folks as to what uh, what you'd like to uh, uh, talk about or or see uh, in in any upcoming sort of live stream. So, but yeah. Um, I think I've got one more thing. Where is my? I don't uh, don't have it on this one. I thought I did. Oh, I do. Yeah. Let's see more. Oh, that's all. Yeah. So that's what I was talking about. There we go. Sorry. Um, so I want to do a few more of these uh, in the coming uh, weeks and stuff. Uh, to think, kind of build up what we talked, build upon what we talked about here today, and uh, and uh, you know some more topics and dive into more detail. Um, maybe have a bit more more fun. This is being the first one. I'm kind of seeing how it goes. So hopefully it's uh, going well. Um, the uh, the other thing we need to uh, and you'll I'll, I'll certainly post something on Facebook and in YouTube when it's going to happen. Um, but I do have uh, a next live stream coming up Monday uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a tool talk, and I'll have uh, Cindy Drozda here with me. Uh, not physically, but uh, we'll invite her in as a, as a guest participant in this, uh, in this forum, and um, we'll banter back and forth about, uh, um, you know, tools, what she likes to do, uh, you know, in certain cuts or grinds and things like that, and, you know, what, what I find. And um, we've got a few other topics kind of canned uh, that we'll talk about, but uh, uh, we're really looking for you guys to, uh, to tune in, and, and uh, we want to just try and keep engaged and uh, keep talking with you folks. So um, but anyway, that's kind of the overview of, uh, of what I've got today. Um, if, there's, uh, if there's anything else, again, uh, let me know either in the comments after this feed is over or drop me a line at uh, uh, the tool store um, and uh, we'll certainly be happy to answer them um, and uh, don't forget uh, Monday uh, uh, the 25th which is Memorial Day so um, first of all everybody have a good safe uh, holiday it's already kind of Saturday is almost over with but uh, hopefully you're staying dry and, and healthy uh, but on Monday the 25th at 4 p.m. Central uh, look forward to that one, and uh, you'll see I'll post that on Facebook here shortly that uh, that one's coming up. So um, we'll have, uh, hopefully everything goes right. I'm going to, there's my fingers crossed. Um, with this technology, we can uh, make it, make that work. It should work well. So, um, But otherwise, uh, I don't see any more comments, so I appreciate everybody watching. Um, I'm going to cut it there. It's about 45 minutes uh, into it, so... Uh, I think that's good long enough for a live stream. Uh, Y'all take care. Uh, Billy, James, Johnny, um, and uh, whoever else joined that I didn't make a comment, I appreciate you joining. Um, who was this up here? Doreen. Thank you, Doreen, Doreen for joining from Canada. And uh, we'll see you all later next time. Watch out for Monday again, 25th, 4 p.m., and we'll see you back here. Um, It'll be on my uh, YouTube channel and this Facebook channel as well. So uh, same place, uh, just Monday at 4. Talk to you then. You guys all have a gay, uh, great, uh, safe uh, weekend and have uh, an enjoyable, uh, long weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>